Hello everyone, it's Professor Fiore, and we're going to take a look in this video at the TINA TI temperature analysis functions. This will allow you to see the behavior of your circuit over a range of temperatures to see what the temperature sensitivity is. So first we're going to start off with looking at individual components and the sorts of response curves we might expect to get. So I'm going to start with a simple uh, resistor capacitor network over here, set up as a little lag, uh, excuse me, a little lead network. The first thing I want to say is that in TINA, the system default temperature, the nominal temperature is 27 degrees centigrade. Now you can reset that if you want. If you come up to the analysis, um, go to set analysis parameters and the very first thing up here is the temperature of the environment. So if for some reason you need to alter that, you can do it right there. I'm going to leave the default. We're going to just run with that. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to say is um, I'm interested in seeing what the temperature sensitivity of this little network is as far as frequency response. Right. In other words, we're going to do a Bode plot, see what happens. So at nominal, in other words, using the sort of face value of my resistors and capacitors and such, we would just figure out the critical frequency is 1 over 2 pi RC. So if you plug in 1K ohm and 1 microfarad, you'll get 159 hertz. In other words, that'll be the 3 decibel down point. The voltage will be at approximately 0.707, 1 over the square root of 2, times what the input is, right? So we've got a 1 volt sign coming in, and at that frequency, we would be down to about 0.707 volts. Right, it's 0 0.707. So um, the question is, what happens with temperature? Well, all components have some kind of temperature sensitivity, a temperature coefficient, or actually a set of coefficients. And in TINA, you can adjust these and then run the analysis over a range of, free, of uh, temperatures to see what that frequency response uh, does, what, you know, how, it's, how it's altered. How sensitive is this circuit to temperature shifts, right? In some cases, that's very, very, very critical. Um, in some cases, not so much. But we would like to investigate. All right, so the first thing I'm going to say is, you know, if we just came in and did a standard AC analysis, transfer characteristic, right? And I'm just going to do a simple amplitude look here um, over a decent range of frequency just to see what our sort of base level is. So we can see 0 dB, minus 10, minus 3 dB is right here. And that's going to be about the 159 that we expect, right? Here's 100 hertz, that's 200 hertz. If you really want to get persnickety about it, we can get a cursor out here and see what we're going to get. All right, so there's 158.9, but we're not exactly at minus 3. So yeah, that's, that's, it's there, all right? It's, just about 159 hertz, as expected. All right, so now we want to do the temperature. So let's go in, and I'm going to grab R1 over here. And along with the resistance value, there's a series of things we can set as far as temperature coefficient. So the first thing I want to note is temperature. It says relative. This is relative to the uh, nominal system default, which is 27. I can set this value. Right now it's set to zero. But if I want to use an offset for some particular reason, I can do that. Maybe I know a com particular component is, you know, attached to a heat sink and it's going to be, you know, warmer than usual, let's say. So you can do that. Um, the next three things are the temperature coefficient, the parts of the temperature coefficient. So the simplest thing is simply a linear temperature coefficient. This is something you can look up on a data sheet, and it'll probably give you a value in parts per million. Now, I'm going to put in some kind of large values here so that we can very clearly see what's happening. Now, this is 1 over centigrade degrees. So this is not parts per million. It's not even parts per thousand. It's parts per degree. So if I was to do, uh, let's say, 0 0.01, that would be uh, 10 milli, basically, right? Um, that's kind of a large number. We would expect for a quality resistor to be under that. 
um, maybe a hundred, a few hundred parts per million, all depending on the construction of the, of the resistor. Now we can also have a quadratic term, in other words, a square term, if there's a bit of a curvature, and also an exponential coefficient. We can throw in all three of these if I have a, uh, a more complex kind of curve, a more, let's call it, real-world sort of curve. I am just going to stick with this one simple thing, this one linear coefficient, and be done with it, okay? So uh, right now I'm just going to say, well, the cap is perfect, but the resistor is going to change, okay? So I'm going to come up to the analysis, and I'm going to change the mode over here, so instead of doing single, we're going to do temperature stepping. So select that button, and now we get a range of temperatures we can set. Start temperature, end temperature, and the number of runs that we want to do. So I'm going to just use the default, which is 0 to 40, but certainly you could come in here and you know change this if you want. Get five cases, whatever. And you have an option to either plot these separately, individual temperature curves, or do them simultaneously. And I'm going to do them sort of overlaid simultaneously just so that we can see what the variation is. All right, so this will give us three curves, one for zero, one for 20, and one for 40. Now remember, the system default is 27, so we're not actually gonna have one that's right at nominal. We can compare this back and forth, okay? All right, so now I'm going to repeat what I did a moment ago, which is the AC transfer characteristic. I'm going to keep this all the same. Bang, zoom. And you can see we got three curves now. So put the uh, legend out here, and you can see that sort of maroon one right here. This is for zero degrees centigrade. And then the green one is at 20 degrees centigrade. And then this sort of olive colored one is at 40 degrees centigrade, right? So those are the three runs that we expected. And we can see, yeah, you know, this, this has a positive temperature coefficient. So the, temp so the resistance is, is uh, uh, going up with temperature. It's increasing with temperature. And, of course, that would lower, with a bigger and bigger resistor, that would lower the critical frequency. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. So if I grab a cursor, right, uh, let me just grab the one here in the middle, the green one. That's the 20 degrees centigrade. And find out where 3 dB down is. All right, so I'm getting like 171 now remember, we're below the nominal temperature. So this is going to assume exactly 1K at 27, but we're at 20. So it's a little cooler. There was, there's going to be a little bit less resistance, and therefore FC is going to be a little bit higher, and that's exactly what we're seeing. All right, so I can come in here and see just sort of how big that variation is on this one component. All right, beauty. I can do that with multiple components. So I can do the same thing with the capacitor. So I can come in here and say, um, all right, I want to, I'll, again, I'll throw in something kind of big here. I'll use 10 milli again. Okay, I, I won't bother with the quadratic. We'll just run with this 10 milli. And now we'll just rerun it. Now I have two of these things that are going to change. And again, this could be a negative temperature coefficient, but I'm just putting the positives in here with these kind of large values so that you can see what's going to happen. Rerun it. Okay, clearly this is a bigger spread than what we had last time. All right. And again, we can see the three temperatures. Okay, so we're going to have, again, the largest values at the lowest temperature. Okay, excuse me, I, I, I said that backwards. The largest values at the highest temperature. So that's this one that's going to produce the lowest critical frequency. And then as the temperature goes down, these values go down, which makes FC go up. So we can see we're way up here now. So if I look at the 40 degrees centigrade curve, try to find minus 3 there, and we're sitting about nearly 300 hertz, okay, right around there. Because both of, the, both of these things have raised so much. Again, I will stress that this, this is kind of a big change compared to what you would typically see. Right? I've specified some rather poor stability components just so that you could see what the curves are. All right. Okay, so that's one thing that you could do. Bodhi plot's a very, uh, very useful sort of thing. Well, um, 
Tina also has a sort of a special uh, temperature analysis. Instead of running individual uh, curves, one at each temperature, it gives you a DC curve. You have this option. So I'm going to show a little resistive voltage divider here. So there is a function called DC temperature analysis. Now, if you just calculated this out, little voltage divider, I've got a 12 volt source, a 10K and a 20K. This is a two to one voltage divider. So I would expect R2 to get two thirds of the total voltage. In other words, eight volts. At 27 degrees, I would expect R2, that voltage drop, to be eight volts, right? Four volts across R1. Now, I'm gonna come in here and change the temperature coefficients from the default of zero. I'm gonna use 12 milli. Again, kind of big value so that you can see what's happening. 12 milli for R2. And then for 10, I've already set this to 10, 10 milli. Now, why did I set them different? Why didn't I set them both to 10 milli like I did in the preceding example? Well, with a simple divider, if I did that, those two things would track perfectly. In other words, they would maintain the two to one ratio and we'd get eight volts at all different temperatures. All right, so I purposely put a little skew in between the two so that we can see what the result is. But again, it's positive temperature coefficient. So as the temperature goes up, these resistors increase, but they don't increase at the same rate. So as we go through a range of temperatures, we will see V out vary. So we come up here to investigate this. Go to DC analysis. And at the very bottom, there is something uh, called temperature analysis. Click on that. And it's going to say, OK, where do you want to start your temperature run? Where do you want to end it? The number of points you want to use uh, for the calculation. I'm just going to use the defaults. Start at 0, go to 100. That will give us plenty. All right, 100 points. This will give us a nice smooth curve. Boom, and here we go. So this is V out, right? This is the V out running from zero up to 100 degrees centigrade. And you can see what the voltage is doing. Now I'm gonna grab a uh, cursor over here and monkey around with this. So as I said, we expected eight volts at the um, system nominal default temperature, right? At 27 degrees. So I'm slowly ramping this thing. I'm tr gonna try to get to exactly eight. Yeah, just a little bit more. Come on. All right, well, that's 8.002 volts and we're at 27 degrees. Okay, so, whoop, you know, with, within the finite resolution that I have here. Yeah, I can't get any further. 9996, it's 26.93. So basically at 27 degrees, you're getting the expected eight volts, but you can see what's happening. Right down here at zero, at freezing, you know, we're getting about maybe 7.8 volts, maybe a smidge less than that, right, 7.937. And then up at 100 degrees, pretty warm, all right, boiling water, uh, we're getting uh, about 8.2 volts, okay? So we can see exactly what's going on here. Um, very handy little thing, right? So this is a nice DC sort of uh, uh, analysis for you. You have a complex DC circuit with lots of resistors in it. Um, you want to see what's going to happen as temperature shifts. This is a way to do it. On the other hand, you want to see the temperature sensitivity in terms of something like frequency response. This is the way that you would do it. All right. So you got two new tools in your toolbox to do temperature analysis. Right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one, learned something from it. And until next time, this is Professor Fiore saying, have a good one.